Hello chess friends and welcome to your Zard of Chess channel and welcome to a truly amazing game that I think could be really, really useful in your home preparation when you play with the black pieces. Welcome to a spectacular game played by the top engine Cinder against the most powerful chess engine in the world against Stockfish 17 in a crazy Catalan opening. And the Catalan opening I think is so so hard to study. There's many sidelines, there, there are many variations that can happen to you and I think the beauty about this game is that Stockfish will show us here a simplified way how to play the katan and then i think you can get out of the opening really, really in a good way but actually also what's cool about this game is that this game is a repetition of an amazing game played by a ding Litten against magnus carlson back from 2020 where magnus i would say didn't find maybe the didn't find the optimal uh, continuation so here stockfish will improve a little bit magnus carlson's theory and i think uh, this is really, really important important game that i'll show you today because i I think it improves uh, uh, really many many sidelines it really improves the cut on opening from black's perspective so let's see now what happened let's now dive into the game with white the cinder engine opened with the move d4 stockfish response was knight to f6 after c4 e6 we have now the move g3 the cut on opening d5 immediately challenging now the center and now after bishop to g2 now comes the standard bishop to b4 and now again many solutions that white can play white can play knight to c3 bishop to d2 knight to d2 uh, here cinder played uh, the common bishop to d2 now there are opportunities you can play bishop to e7 which was basically by my main move when i played against the katan opening i played this uh, sideline very very often but now i think this method that stockfish will play here with the move a5 is even more interesting and i think again it's a simplified way to go into the game because um white doesn't have so many options now in this particular position so you what white could of course do is to play maybe the move bishop to b4 but i think bishop to b4 simplifies again the game uh for black here after a takes b4 okay you have maybe here the double pawns on the b file but these pawns are really hard to attack even if you try queen to b3 this wasn't playing the game but of course we want to practice a little bit theory then you play just a calm queen to d6 and even if c5 happens you still retreat okay you lose the pawn in the beginning but now with b6 uh you see the queen is pinned here we can now even trade off here and now in one moment we get this powerful central control now actually we're rolling here in the center when the pawn comes to e5 when the bishop comes into this uh, into the game um here black i think has really very really good compensation for the lost pawn has really an activity here in the center you can maybe try b4 but then rook to b8 stops of course the progress of the pawn you have to play a3 and now when e5 is coming i would love to play now this position from black's perspective Active for sure so uh, taking here the pawn still even in this position there are many sidelines but i think this simplifies the game too much uh here for white and that's now also not the spirit i would say of the cut on opening that you trade off too many pieces uh, in the early stage of the game so that's why for a5 uh, here knight chop free by uh, cinder stock which continues now with d takes c4 forces now again a reaction by white black grab the pawn you have to now battle for your pawn and here queen to c2 obviously played by sinner stock which continues now with b6 let's see again options um here for for white um in the game um, knight to e5 has been played but let's also see what happens for instance if uh, white would have continued with the move queen to c4 then we have bishop to a6 of course a beautiful tempo against the queen the queen has to drop back and now we have to see okay you can even play c5 even if knight to e5 happens now um, now you just step back with the rook and now even if this happens i would say after knight to c3 casting this is equal equal game maybe white has this beautiful knight that is a little bit controlling uh this knight on b8 but you can battle with the knight to d7 and then in some lines maybe after knight to d7 the rook could come uh here on the default and i would say black would have an, a beautiful body activity also there are problems for white uh here around the score e2 the knight is a little bit um stuck to the defense of this of this pawn many options here my stockfish engine at home evaluates this position as equal so this was also an option maybe here for white to take the pawn on c4 but in the game uh knight to e5 which is still perfectly fine for white attacking of course the rook stockfish has to step back and now calcing if uh queen to c4 now is played is 
actually not working because after bishop to a6 and uh, bishop to f3 uh, bishop to c6 uh, you just take and then you step back again the e2 pawn is weak now we're continuing the game with the bishop pair bishop to b7 is going to happen so i'm not seeing here good options after queen to uh, bishop to a6 uh, even if you try to play queen to c2 then the pawn is obviously hanging on d4 so again not a good continuation uh, here for white so not so many uh, things can be done so here after rook to a7 uh cinder simply castled and now we come to the critical moment that i mentioned also into in the intro of the video here uh we're still following the game between dingler and magnus carlson and here in this particular position believe me or not magnus played the move bishop takes d2 and the game ended with a draw what Magnus didn't dare to play is queen to d4 that actually Stockfish played. And this move actually becomes now a theoretical novelty with the black pieces here of the Catan opening. And the issue is obviously that the queen is endangered in the center of the board. Something is going to happen. Obviously, the queen will be kicked away by potential rook to uh, d1 move. And also, what's worth to mention is that the king is still in the center of the board. You lose probably another tempo in order to secure the king. That was probably Cinder's calculation. That was probably uh, here the tactical problem for Black. But you see now how Stockfish will solve every, every tactical problem in the game. So I think it's an interesting line. Maybe you can trick your opponent if this happens to you. Uh, still, you have to battle here for a win. Obviously, you gain the pawn, but now it's really time uh, to be a really, really great calculator because, not because now the game is becoming very, very tactical. So here, bishop to f4. Cinder is trying to keep now many pieces on the board, is targeting, of course, the c7 weakness, and is trying to finally bring the rook into the game and put more pressure here on the d-file. Stockfish plays bishop to d6, locks now uh, the d-file, rook to d1, queen to c5, and now rook takes d6 cinder is playing here also beautiful beautiful tactical chess and this is not a mistake because after uh here uh, c takes d6 that stockfish plays obviously you don't want to play queen to d6 getting in front of the bishop the issue is now there are many targets here uh, that white can attack knight takes c4 of course by cinder now there is a d6 weakness also there is a b6 weakness the bishop is very very active here even if you try something like here e5 then bishop to e3 where you're going with the queen queen to b5 and then knight to d6 is trapping the queen so this not working so after knight to c4 now black has to know how to continue here in a good way stockfish continues now with bishop to a6 which is the best move here moves like uh, rook to uh, rook to d7 uh, are not working bishop to e3 again very very dangerous stuff against the queen you have to play maybe queen to f5 and now queen to f5 e takes f5 uh, this this is a weakness uh, you can still take it with the paw uh, with the knight or maybe with the bishop the position is suddenly becoming messy here for for white although uh, black is up the exchange but it's hard to get this rook somehow into the game this bishop is a beast here on this diagonal uh, here my stockfish engine at home for instance evaluate this position is slightly better uh, for white so stockfish after knight to c4 plays now the correct move again plays actively with bishop to a6 now knight takes d6 seems tempting uh, it comes of course with the check but now come king to e7 solves every ta tactical problem even if you try knight to c3 to keep of course your queens on the board then rook to uh, d7 attacks now the piece and now even if you step back knight to uh, knight to e4 will simply take and now i think the position is great here for black the king all in the center of the board is not so endangered uh white gained the spawn on d6 but now we can double up the rooks in one moment the position could collapse on the default here for white so this is not working after bishop to a6 and um the the the, the, uh, the move knight to d6 that didn't work that's why here uh cinder tried knight to d2 which again makes perfect sense you're bringing new attackers into the game you're playing active chess you want to develop your pieces and black's king is of course still stuck in the center of the board stockfish continues with rook to d7 we have bishop to e3 queen to b5 the queen is getting now on a really strange square uh, Cinder continues the pressure, but now after Queen to b4, there's no good attack anymore against the Queen. So that's why Knight to b6 finally now here by uh, by Cinder, and now Stockfish plays a great counterattack with Knight to g4. Seems simply 
gives back the material, simply gives back the rook. Uh, that's uh, the exchange uh, that Stockfish gained a couple of moves ago. But there is a beautiful part after knight to d7 and knight to e3. This move comes, of course, with the direct threat against the queen. Uh, here, Cinder is forced now to play queen to b3, but now knight to d7. And now, after queen to e3, uh, Stockfish got out of this mess. The material is equal, but I would say here, with the better activity for black, there is a weak pawn now on b2, there is a weak pawn on a4. In some lines, we can even lock this diagonal with the move d5. This bishop is very active, and there's also a beautiful square for the knight. And now for black with knight to c5, or maybe with knight to e5. And we're just now one move far away from calcing. We can still maybe put more pressure on the b5 so suddenly the position is getting better and better uh, here for black for sure and the good part is also that this pawn is somehow holding these two pawns it's even very hard for uh, white to create any pass pawns on the queen side meanwhile black has of course this central control with this pawn so uh, here for instance in this particular position stock which evaluates this position is almost plus one in black's favor so castling finally by the fish good move not taking the pawn on b2 because there are severed tactical threats with rook to b1 now you step back and now after queen to d4 uh, both pawns are hanging this pawn on d6 and also the pawn on g7 after something like this i think white gained equality again because the king is now re endangered on e7 and i think white could hold this position even if you uh, try something like this of course first of all this rook is hanging so uh, this is simply too slow so that's why uh here instead of um, playing um Pardon me here after queen to e3 stockfish didn't take played simply king side casting and now rook to c1 here by cinder stockfish continues now with queen to a4 bishop to c6 attacking now the knight and the queen but now bishop to b5 solves again the tactical issues in the position b3 we have now queen to a3 great counter attack here by the fish first of all the rook is hanging we have now knight to f3 and now rook to c8 you cannot take the piece of course because here uh the the rook is hanging on the c file that's why knight to d4 putting more pressure here uh, against this bishop holding also the position around the score c6 but now a great move by the fish bishop to a6 and this move is very really, really stunning what should you do now uh, here from uh, from white's perspective obviously you cannot take because the rook is hanging here on c1 if you try here something like knight to c2 which makes perfect sense then then there is a beautiful beautiful move with queen to b2 and this now just brutal brutal stockfish stuff this wasn't played in the game but i wanted to show how really powerful this move bishop to a6 is uh, because after uh, knight to c2 uh, as we mentioned, now you play queen to b2 and you allow this knight to be taken, but now the rook is coming into the game. Look at this, rook to c3. If you step back with the queen here to d2 to hold the knight here uh, on c2, then there is a beautiful bishop takes e2. If queen to e2 happens, then we can obviously pick up um, here the rook and then afterwards the piece, so this is not working. So that's why after uh, queen to d2 and bishop to e2, uh, white could hold maybe a little bit the position with bishop to a4 but now you play just the calm h6 uh getting some escape uh, squares for the king and now after something like b4 a takes b4 uh obviously black is winning the game the position is sort of a zugzwang uh position for for white here where white doesn't have any any good moves really interesting position that actually bishop to a6 in this scenario is working even allowing some moves like knight to c2 uh, here by white so uh, here after bishop to a6 that's why rook to c2 by uh, cinder trying somehow to hold the position uh, connecting now the rook to the knight but now stockfish plays knight to c5 a good good and calm move the knight is really really now good square king to g2 king to g2 improvement of the king here and now h6 again a calm move a quiet move here liberating some squares for the potential king of course escape if something clears on the back rank then you want to of course have a good score for the king after h6 bishop to f3 we have now the move a4 rook to c3 a takes uh, b3 knight to b3 and now 
knight to d7. Stockfish is still trying to keep the pieces on the board. Uh, Cinder took, Stockfish takes, and now after queen to d3, bishop to a6. Again, putting more pressure here against the uh, white's queen in this tactical sequence. You see now also uh, black gained the pawn and... Um, in AI chess world, this is really, really, I think, a position where you cannot do so much against the strongest chess center in the world against Stockfish 17. So here, queen to b1 by Cinder, Stockfish centralizes the knight. We have now f5, kick away the uh, bishop, bishop to f3, and now knight takes f3. You cannot take with the king because obviously the bishop is coming in a brutal, brutal way into the game. You're probably getting destroyed uh, on life course after a couple more moves. So that's why after knight to f3, e takes f3 uh, here by Cinder, trying somehow to get the king protected by the pawns. But now there is a passer on the d file. There is still this very unpleasant bishop on this diagonal. There's still the clear target here on f3, and slowly but surely uh, the position is collapsing here for black. e5, Stockfish pushes the pawns further, centralizing the queen pinning now the knight to the queen, trying to trade off even the pieces. Perfect, perfect play here. And why not with the upper pawn, with the possibility uh, just to push the pawn on the default. I think it's also a nice endgame strategy here. Queen to e3, queen to c2, knight to d2, uh, centralizing the bishop. Great move. And now uh, placing the king on a good square. We have now knight to uh, h2, stockfish forces now a uh, trade of queens. We have queen to e3, f takes e3, and now e4. And this move is a Again, really great because this move is paralyzing now the knight till the end of the game the knight doesn't have any any good squares even if you try i don't know to somehow i don't know um, get the knight out with the h5 then to push the pawn on g g4 then we can play simple king to g8 if you try here i don't know to play finally the move g4 king to f7 i'm not sure look at this you're trying maybe something like this then this king is still marching in one moment uh, if we manage to push the pawn on d4, this is, I think, again, nothing, nothing that uh, can be done anymore uh, here for white. The issue is that we're just keeping the knight out of the game. Nothing is really working. Even if you try, I don't know, knight 12 one to get the knight uh, here in this particular position uh, into the game, then you just trade off uh, the pieces. Black is up a pawn. Black can, of course, play this the uh, forced move now by white and once the king gets centralized whatever you do if you go here we could just go for the pawn in one moment if you go of course here then we play king chop three and go for this pawn again game over here for for white so after e4 king chop two stockfish plays now calm h5 and now simply goes with the king towards the center and after king to e6 in this particular position uh cinder resigned so what's the issue why did uh, why did white resign here because we just go with the king towards uh here this side of the board the knight is as we mentioned still out of the game and now in one moment you play just the move just in order to force a reaction by white and now when d4 is coming we have this supported pass pawn on the e-file you just play like this and then again white is forced to play a move and now you play king to f2 and the pawns are lost here on this side of the board game over here for for white so great game by stockfish 17 with the black pieces in the catalan opening really an interesting line with a5 and then going for the d4 pawn still this theory has to be studied deeper of course white and black will not always play like this but i think it's it's an interesting line we have seen here an improvement this queen to d4 is actually working let's go back to this moment so queen to d4 seems dangerous uh, but you have to now know what you're doing you have to get your pieces back you saw also in one moment stockfish gave back the exchange uh, which is also a common strategy when you get attacked sometimes it's best to give back material and then um, get out of this tactical mess i think very, very instructive game by the most powerful chess center in the world by stockfish 17 so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game really really interesting stuff of the really one of the one of the the sharpest opening in the world uh, of the Catalan opening. If you want to see some other beautiful uh, Catalan opening games here, check out our Catalan opening playlist. And if you want to see maybe some other spectacular games played by the most powerful chess center in the world by Stockfish 17, check out our playlist. Also, the come to chess games played by computers. And if you like this content, hit the subscribe button. See you soon with some more videos. And what do we say in the end? Chess is the best, of course.